Well, we are in this series called Anxious for Nothing, and if you weren't here last week, I want to encourage you to go watch that message. It was so powerful. Pastor James did such a good job of introducing it, and it was awesome, so go watch it. Now look, our theme verse can be found in Philippians 4 and 6, or we'll, let's start with 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, this is the promise, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pray before we get started here, God. Thank you so much that we get to come to your house and hear your word, Lord. I just pray for everybody here today, God. Lord, you know what is troubling their hearts, God. And we pray that today... Today would be breakthrough, God, and that chains would be broken today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so anxiety. Anxiety is tricky. And if we had to define anxiety, it would be a little bit complicated. So anxiety can be, it can be physiological. You can feel uh, like physical symptoms. You can sweat. Your, your uh, heart can start beating fast. It could be emotional. It could be situational, but I think that it can always, or it's always, spiritual. You agree? And so, for me, it looks different for every person. It looks uh, different even from day to day, I feel. And so, for me, I struggle with being anxious. Um, and so, sometimes it can be, like, super silly, you know? Like, I, I can get anxious over the littlest things. So, I can go to a restaurant, and the waiter comes and gives me my food, and he's like, enjoy your meal, and I'm like, you too! No, no, don't enjoy your meal. You're telling me, okay, this is why I'm so awkward. Oh my gosh. And I start to get anxious. And I'm like, this is why I can't let people close to me because I'm so awkward. And that's, sometimes that's what anxiety looks like for me. And other times, I wake up and I just start to feel like this heaviness over me. Like my day hasn't even started and I'm like, oh. Okay, and I start to think, I'm in bed, and I'm already going through the to-do list, like, okay, I got to get up, and I got to get the kids ready, and then I've got to take them to school, and then I got to take Chris to the airport, and then I have to come to work, and then I got to leave early, because I got to go get the kids. Uh, <sighs> Moms, yes, yes, right? This is how we feel, and our feet have not even hit the ground, and I'm already anxious. And, and other times, for me, it's looked like, I don't know how we're going to make it through this health diagnosis. I have no idea. And what if, God, and what if, and what if, and what, and that's what it looks like for me. And you know, I think for a long time in society, anxiety has been looked at like, ooh, shh, if you have anxiety, we don't talk about that. And I think especially for Christians, we're like, no, you don't need to be anxious because you're a Christian, you have God, but yet we still feel anxious, yes? And so, um, I wanted to, to tell you guys and share with you guys that if you feel anxious, it's okay. It's okay. I think a lot of us feel anxious. And if we look in our Bible, anxiety has been around for a very long time. And I'm going to dare to say that even Jesus felt anxious. And so if we think about Jesus knew he was going to die on the cross. He knew it. And so he's, you know, at the Last Supper and he's telling uh, Peter, someone's going to deny me. And one of my friends is going to betray me. And so he, I, I can imagine the buildup that he must have been feeling in his human body, right? Knowing that he was going to die. And so I wanted to kind of pick up uh, the scripture in Luke 22. It says, he went out and he made his way to the Mount of Olives and the disciples followed him. And when he reached the place, he told them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. Do you ever like tell somebody something and really you're telling yourself? Like, so for example, like maybe you're at a theme park and you're about to ride a roller coaster with your kid and you're like, don't be scared, it's just a roller coaster. But really you're telling yourself like, and so I, I, I picture Jesus almost like telling his disciples, pray, pray that you will not fall into temptation. And so it says, then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. He knelt down and he began to pray and he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Not, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. How many of you felt like that? Because I for sure have. But what I love about this is that Jesus, oh, I didn't even finish reading. Okay, it says, 
<laughs> an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. Being in anguish, he prayed more fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. Now, I've been anxious, but I've never started to sweat blood. I haven't, like not to that severity. And so that tells me that Jesus was anxious, okay? But he also showed me what to do when I'm anxious. And he was, what was he doing? He was praying. And see, um, every time we feel anxious, it should be our signal to pray. And so, you know, you have a car and your check engine light comes on. The check engine light is telling you, hey, something's wrong with your car. The, the light in itself is not the problem. It's just letting you know that there is a problem. And if you're wise, you'll take your car to the manufacturer, to the one who made the car, so that they can fix the problem. And that's what we need to do. We need to go back to our creator, the one who made us, so that he can fix what's wrong with us. Amen? But see, I can say that. I can say, okay, guys, let's pray. But prayer is intimidating. Prayer, prayer sometimes, you know, I have a, a friend who's a prayer ninja, okay? Her name is Karen Whittington. <laughs> And see, I can pray and I can say, God, help me. But, pray, but Karen comes at, the Lord says in Isaiah 53, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I'm just like, whoa. And I just picture God like, you know, that chair from the voice. And he just hits the button, turns around and like listens to Karen and, and, and not me. <laughs> that's, that's my friend. <laughs> I mean, but really, you know, sometimes I'm going through things and I'm like, TT, I call her TT. TT, yeah. I need you to pray for me. Um, but anyway, so prayer can be intimidating. I think that sometimes we're like, okay, so how do we pray? Uh, do we address him, omnipotent father? You know, do we have to pray in King James, James Version? What happens if we fall asleep when we pray? Like, is the, is the prayer, like, null, nullified? Like, <laughs> did it count? Did you hear the first part before I fell asleep? You know, does it count? <laughs> um, and so anyway, that's kind of where I want to park it today a little bit. And I, let, me, let me say this before I, I move on. God isn't, he hears my prayers and he hears Karen's prayers. God isn't moved by eloquence and, and big old words. He's not, okay? So, um, so today where I wanted to focus was that Prayer can be intimidating, and I wanted to kind of help you frame your prayers for when you're anxious. How are we going to do this, all right? So our first, the first thing I want you to do when you pray is to start with Thanksgiving. Now, this is a good time, like kind of worked for me because it's November, you know, so I, it, it worked out in my favor for us to say, let's start with Thanksgiving. And see, the problem is so much of our anxiety is because we focus on our lack. We focus on what we don't have. We focus on our lack of money, our lack of sleep, our lack of friends, our lack, whatever it is for you, fill in the blank. And if we would return our focus to what we already have, we're so, we're, we're, we forget so easily, so easily. If we would return our focus on what we already have, that alone, just that alone would already begin to lift our spirits. Do you know that psychiatrists and psychologists say that gratitude, the practicing gratitude, it's the it can have the same effect as an antidepressant. And so the brain begins to release uh, neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, and it begins to lift our mood. So if we're coming to prayer and starting our prayers by saying, God, thank you, Thank you that everything feels crazy right now, but thank you. Then just start listing it. Thank you that I have a house. Thank you that I, my, I have children. Thank you for my job. Thank you, God. Thank you. If we would start by just doing that, it would begin to alleviate some of our anxiety. And not just that. Think of what it does for the Father. The other day, we were out of town. Um, we went to Dallas with my husband, and, and we stopped at the the Texas Aquarium or Dallas Aquarium, whatever. And um, we went, we had a great time. But as we were getting back in the car, my daughter, she looks at me and she says, Mommy, thank you. I had so much fun. Thank you for bringing me. And like after I got over the initial like, whoa, she thanked me. 
you know? <laughs> like, after I got over that, I was like, baby, you're welcome. Like, you're welcome. And that made me, it made me smile, and it made me feel proud of her, and it made me want to, like, take her more places like that. And so what do you think that does for your Father in heaven when you come back to him in gratitude and you thank him? God, thank you for what you've given me. I wanted to read Psalm uh, 103. I like this because it's kind of like David. He's talking to himself, and he's like commanding himself. You ever talk, talk to yourself and tell, you, tell yourself things? He says, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all your sins. He heals all of your diseases, and he redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. So that's David telling himself, remember, remember what he's done. Amen? Okay, so that's the first step that we're going to do when we pray. We're going to give thanks. Now, the second one that we're going to do is humble ourselves. This is kind of like, ouch. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read the scripture in 1 Peter 5 and 7, or 5 and 6. It says, humble yourselves. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And see, I used to read this, and I used to be like, I'm good. Like, I think I'm a pretty humble person. I don't think I'm conceited. I don't think I'm arrogant. This one I've got, God. But I feel like the scripture doesn't say, humble yourselves, therefore, under your peers, under your coworkers, under... It doesn't say that. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. And see, Peter's writing this. And so Peter has seen God's hand firsthand. I mean, he was walking on water, sinking, and God lifted him up with his hand, okay? Peter also saw him um, feed the 5,000 whenever, the, you know, there was only two fish and some bread. God fed the, the, the multitude with his hand. And see, God's hand can do things that I'll never be able to do. God's hand can multiply. He can provide. He can heal. He can sustain. I can't do that, but I think that I can sometimes. Sometimes I think I can handle my own problems. I think, oh, it's okay, God. I've, I've got this. I've got this. I, I can make all the lists. I can make all the to-dos. I can call. I can. You? You relate? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and, some t and, and when I see it like that, maybe I'm not so humble after all. And maybe that makes me prideful because I won't relinquish the control. I want to be in control. And so, and so that's where we struggle. That's where we struggle with not humbling ourselves. And see, it's simple. I asked if they could put up the word anxiety up there um, if you look at the word anxiety and how it's spelled in English, what's at the very center of that word? I. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe the reason we are so anxious is because we're right in the middle. We're right in the, it, we're sitting in the throne that only God can sit in. We make ourselves in control on the throne. And we don't even belong there and we're so anxious, and we want to control, and it's this cycle, we want to control, and then we fear losing control, so we get even more anxious, and no, 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 I want to be in control. And so, when you're prideful, God can't lift you up. He can't. I wrote it this way, you cannot be a control freak and walk by faith at the same time. You can't. And so when we pray, after we've thanked him, we come to him and we say, God, I surrender. I lift my hands up. I throw my hands up in the air and I surrender, God, because your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my ways. You're king. I'm not. I can't do this without you, Lord. And so our third step, we give thanks, we humble ourselves, and then we cast. I want to ask Chris, Chris, can you come up here now? Um, so, my youth know that I'm a fan of demonstrations. I wanted to do, like, this practical demonstration for you guys with some balls, prank can you make this, please? Um, so I've asked Chris if he can come up here and help me. The third point that I wanted to do is cast your anxieties onto him because he cares for you. Thank you, Frank. 
And so, like I was saying, um, you know, life comes at us, right? And we like to be in control. So let's just say life throws me, go ahead and throw it. <laughs> I can't do two things at once. I either talk or I catch. <laughs> okay, so say life throws me um, a job loss, okay? I lost my job and I caught it and I carry it because I want to be in control. I'm, I, I've got an education, Lord. I've got this. I, I can submit the, I can go on Indeed, and I can apply, and I, I got this. And then life throws me, oh, <laughs> life throws me um, a miscarriage, let's say, okay? And I don't deal with the pain that that brings. I don't, I, 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 I internalize it, and I don't give it over to God. And see, I carry it, and I can still walk, right? I've got mobility. I've, I'm carrying them, but I'm, I'm okay. I can come to church. I can lift my hands. I can raise a hallelujah. I can clap, and I'm okay, right? But how many of you know it's never just one thing or two things that life throws at you, right? It's usually all at once, right? And so be gentle on me, bro, okay? <laughs> and so life throws me something else, and I catch it, and I carry it, and then it's it's... It's a strange relationship, and it's, uh, you know, a divorce, and I think I can do one more. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> and so I catch, and I carry, right? And I'm walking around life carrying all these things that I was never meant to carry. And I'm, I'm carrying, and I'm, and, and, and I'm so stressed out that I take it out on my kids and I take it out on my husband and, and I'm depressed and I just want to stay, stay in bed all day. And I'm caring and I'm caring. And you might think I look foolish up here. But this is how a lot of us are walking in life. Yeah. Caring and caring. And see, God, God is somewhere over there saying, hey, give it to me. Give it to me. I'll carry it for you. And we'd rather carry. We'd rather carry it. And see, sometimes we'll come to church and we'll say, okay, God, I'm going to release it. I'm going to release it. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to release it. Let me not fall. And so we come to church and we come to the altar and we release it. And what do we do before we walk out? Pick it right back up, Chris. Can you help me? <laughs> And we pick it, thank you, and we pick it right back up, and we go home with it, and we're walking around in our jobs and our homes with our families carrying it. And sometimes we'll cast, but we'll cast it to our friends. We'll cast it to our spouse. We'll cast it to Facebook. And what is Facebook going to do for me? What, is, what are my friends going to do for me? What is my, my husband going to he, do? He can't do what God does. He can't. And see, sometimes God is there, and he tries to throw me a blessing, and I can't even catch it. I can't catch it because my hands are full. Carrying things I was never meant to carry. And so here, let me put this. And God is saying, thanks guys, y'all are awesome. And God is saying, cast these things to me. I can carry it. And he's saying, and you know what happens when you do cast? An exchange happens. He says in, in that verse that we were going over, Philippians, and the peace that surpasses all all understanding will guard your minds and your heart. That's what happens when you cast. Oh, and I forgot this part. So Peter wrote uh, that scripture, cast. So he was a fisherman, right? And so he's talking about a casting net. You know, when you cast, you have to be in position. You have to violently cast that. It's not a toss. It's like a it is a cast to where it's so far away, I can't pick it back up. God's got it. Amen? And so an exchange happens. When you cast that to God, he's the only one 
who can give you beauty for ashes. He is the only one who can turn your situation around for good. He's the only one, guys. And why do we go to, to our friends and to all sorts of things? They can't do anything for us. And some of us are carrying things from way back when. We're like, hey, God, we'll give you this one, but not this one. I'm holding on to this because you don't know how bad they hurt me. And I'm going to put up walls. And I'm not going to forgive God because if I give it to you, you're going to make me forgive them. And I'm not going to forgive them. And so I wanted to tell you guys today that there is so much power in prayer. So much power in casting it. When we pray, I don't know if you know this, but you have authority when you pray in the name of Jesus. When you pray, the chains have to break. The shackles have to to break. There is so much power when we call on the name of Jesus. And some of you have stopped praying. Some of you just stop because you say, you know what, I've been praying and God doesn't answer. Can I tell you that the Bible says that God's ear has not deafened itself. He is still hearing. His arm has not been cut off. He's hearing. So today, open your mouth back up again and pray because he's listening. He cares about you. It says he cares about you. Somebody who cares about you, they love you. They listen. They take care of you. They're with you every step of the way, even though, even if you can't feel it. And so today, I don't know what your it is. I don't know what your anxiety is, but it's time for you to let it go. It's time. Stop carrying it. You were not meant to carry that on your own. And so I wanted to do a call. Whatever your thing is, if you are bold enough to say this is it, draw the line, God. This is the day that I release it. I want you to come forward so that we can pray together. How many of you know sometimes you just need somebody to pray for you? So if you would, just step out of your seat and come forward it's so that we can pray together. I want the band to, to sing um, while we just go into this moment of, of prayer and surrender unto God.